Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 11, Part 2, Chapter 23. Uh, we had done a very interesting verses, that is 46, 47, 48. These verses are connected with the mind, the most important uh, expression of what we do and what we don't do. Mind has been considered the most powerful aggressor in our world. It is fearsome and it is very, very difficult to control. So there were certain techniques which were discussed last week about how to overcome that. And last week when we closed, we have discussed about how mind, when it becomes very strong and powerful, it becomes a repressible, irrepressible enemy. It doesn't tolerate, it doesn't um, listen to anything that you say. Your heart is overtaken by your mind. And the person becomes quarrelsome, he becomes angry with every little thing in this world and is upset about it and considers other people as enemies. The mind is so strong that it will say that you are right and the other person is wrong. And everybody else in the world is your enemy. Sometimes it classifies as these are people from my side, these are opposite to me and some people are neutral. This is what the mind finally predicts to you, projects to you. And Overcoming this mind is extremely important. So this is what we had done last time. Now, we are doing Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 11, Part 2, Chapter 23, Verse 49. Persons who identify with this body, which is simply the product of the material mind, are blinded in their intelligence, thinking in terms of I and mine. Because of their illusions of this is I, but that is someone else and wander in endless darkness. So now let us see what happens to this mind which is overtaking your entire heart and being. So this mind tells you that you are the greatest thing on planet earth. And every sentence, now you should observe the person whose mind is very very sharp or has overtaken the way in which the person lives, he will always begin his sentence with I. I, me, myself are the words which he always begins the sentence with. I understand. I know. You don't have to teach me this. And this trait tells the person that you are the strongest, you are the best, and is not willing to take any answer from any person. He is not interested in finding all the truth at all. Because the ego has become extremely strong. Now let me tell you about ego. There are two things, two kinds of ego. One is the one it's a destructive kind of an ego. Ego is important to maintain yourself in the world. If there is no ego, you cannot maintain yourself. Ego means I have to live. I have to survive. I have to take care of myself, my family, my near and dear ones. That, that I is better than the one which says I am the greatest. I am the strongest. Nobody can do anything to me. You know, I understand everything. This is the destructive ego. And the first one is the ego which you require. Now this little ego is required to identify the separation between yourself and God. And this ego is always, it's important. It's, you have to maintain it. Those who decimate this kind of an ego cannot survive in this world at all. Why they cannot survive? It is because they become literally like a person who will be uh, like a madman on the streets. You have seen, you know, he may, he doesn't even know what he's wearing, how he walks, what he does. And he's talking to himself and just, you know, gesticulating. He's doing all kinds of nonsensical stuff. So such type of a person, 
does not have that I. The I which I talk about is the smaller ego. You require it. But this ego that we are talking about in this verse is a very, very strong ego. The mind has created this extremely difficult enemy for you. People who identify with this body, which is simply the product of the material mind. If you recollect what we did was, we identified how this whole thing, there's a step down and a step up. I had Last week I had told you, I will recap it once again. I said that there is an external body that's called the physical body. Physical body and it also contains what is called as the breathing body. You, you breathe in and out. Then below that we have the mind and the intellect body. Below that we have the, the happy body so on and so forth. The uh, subtle bodies are there. Now that is connected to the spirit soul. Spirit soul is also identified as Jeev Atma. It is not soul. It is connected to you. That means it has identified itself to this entity called you. Over and above that is the super soul or what we call as Paramatma. Paramatma is God Almighty. Now, so we came from body to Paramatma. Now I will take you the other way around. So there is what we call as God Almighty, the Almighty God, Supreme Divine Consciousness. Some people call him God, Bhagwan. you name him as Krishna, whatever you wish to call. There is no name for this God. This God creates an identity which is in collaboration with the spirit. Now if you see how the Christians, when they do the sign of the cross, how do they do it? In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit is the middle. If you see the Spirit, I have put up one picture which where you can see there is a picture of Father in heaven. There is a son. Uh, have I put it up? I think I have not, but I will put it up. Uh, yesterday I was in a church, so there I saw this beautiful picture which I have shot. I will put it up. So you will understand Father in heaven. And in between you will find that there is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is sometimes represented by a white light. Sometimes like a dove. You know, the dove. Sometimes as a woman. Uh, we say as a mother. It can be represented as anything. Like father in heaven cannot be represented like a man. No. Father in heaven would be an identity which they always show as a bearded, oldish kind of a person. There is no such bearded, oldish kind of a person as father in heaven. Uh, I would rather have my father in heaven as a very young person. <laughs> Isn't it? So, <laughs> it's a representation. So, father in heaven is always considered as an old, grouchy old person. But he is not grouchy, he is not old. He is eternal. So, there is father in heaven, there is a spirit. Now, think, if this is how the gradation is, the father, the son and the spirit in between, the spirit is the one which is, you are the portion of that spirit. The Holy Spirit is within you. So, now this Holy Spirit combined with you, that is this Jeev Atma. Jeev Atma. So now I hope you understand. That spirit is what we are talking about. Now, coming back to this verse. People who identify this body, which is simply the product of the material mind, are blinded by in their intelligence. So what does it mean? The mind has become so strong that it has overtaken the body as well as the intellect. The intellect is material worldly intellect. It is no longer the spiritual intellect. It is a material worldly intellect. The mind is become so strong. It tells the body what it is supposed to do and not supposed to do. Now this kind of an intellect, this kind of a mind, defines everything in this world. It can tell the person that you are that God. You are that absolute powerful entity. And you are that I. 
Do you recollect? There is a story in the Bible where the person wanted to make a tower right up to the heavens, the king. <laughs> and with a stroke of you know lightning, the entire tower. It's also called the tower even in tarot. So any person who tries to think that they are greater than the Lord Almighty are brought down to their knees. Basically, that is the understanding. This ego, which thinks no end of itself, is that powerful I. And the, remember, so who is the controlling factor over there? The mind. The mind says, this is what you got to believe. And it says, I have given you this material body. I have given you this riches. I have, I have made you who you are. So the person starts believing that, you know, I have become great because of myself. He starts believing that it is my intellect, it is my brains. Have, don't you know that there are these kind of people? There are scientists also, there are human beings also, who even if they are in a wheelchair, even if they cannot move their face, even if they cannot talk, still consider themselves as greater than Lord Almighty. I'm sure you understand what I'm talking about. So such kind of people start believing that they are the greatest thing. And what they don't seem to realize is even their condition, no, nobody on this planet earth can you know, save them. Death by itself cannot be also, you know, they, they are not dying, they are alive. And they are living literally like a vegetable. So the mind has become so strong that it tells that person, you are the greatest thing on planet earth. And that is the reason why he says, blinded in their intelligence, thinking in the terms of I and mine. My knowledge. I am this. I can achieve this. I am capable. That I has become very strong. Because of their illusion of this is I and that is someone else, they wander in endless darkness. So what happens to these kind of people? They are completely deluded in this world. They think of themselves as the greatest thing on planet earth and rule the world. They believe that they are the rulers. They can do anything. They can't. Their lives, including their family and every other person around them, is not within their hands at all. No, no, no science on this planet earth can predict what is going to happen next because there is no such thing which exists in their world. They can predict a chemical reaction. They can predict a cosmic reaction which is happening. Some stars are exploding. That even our astrologers can do. You know that, no? Astrologers can predict well in advance what is going to happen. Astronomers which we had like Aryabhatta and all, they also could predict anything. They can write a calendar for the next 20,000 years also. You can also do that. That is not called prediction. That is basically you are writing down based on what has happened and how the things are going to be. The planetary position, so on and so forth. You can also predict that there is going to be a, you know, a hail of uh, meteor showers which is coming. You can definitely predict. But no one can say what is going to happen to that individual life. And this is the important thing. We can never say anything in absolute, you know, with an underlying thing that this is what is going to happen. So, let us come to the next verse. If you say that these people are the cause of my happiness and distress, then where is the place of the soul in such a conception? This happiness and distress pertains not to the soul, but to the interaction of material bodies. If someone bites his tongue with his own teeth, at whom can he become angry in his suffering? So these bewildered people, 
how do they behave? They say that I am hmm, biting my own tongue, so naturally I am going to feel you know hurt inside. You know my tongue will hurt. So they believe that since they are responsible, the cause of my happiness and distress. So they believe. If you say these people are the cause of my happiness and distress, then where is the place of the soul in such a conception? Do you know your happiness and distress, you always consider it in another person? Oh, this person is not behaving properly with me. This person is like this. My son is like this. My daughter is like this. My husband is like that. My wife is like this. Don't you say so? I mean, have you not seen in this world? That store's clerk, you know, the person who was selling you something was misbehaving, was not showing me the right stuff. And that is the reason why I am suffering. Have you heard these sentences? You will say that, you know, yesterday I went out and had a lot of chat. By the way, these people had. <laughs> oh, that is the reason why I am... Uh, Having a lot of loose motions. Of course, you can predict that. But just a few days ago, somebody was saying, four days I ate chat outside in Delhi. You know, people have heard of this term called Delhi belly. You know, Delhi belly is a very famous term in India. Those who come to India and eat things from outside and drink water from a, wherever that they go to, and they end up having continuous loose motions and naturally <laughs> they feel sick. This person said that, you know what? I was not, I ate for four whole days the chart from Delhi and yet nothing happened to me. Why was that? And that one day, the last day, I had a pizza and I had a problem. So you had a pizza and there was cheese in it and your cheese, you know, milk intolerance is there and that is the reason why you ended up having problems. How is that possible? Think about it. So you will say immediately identify, okay, the cheese in the pizza is responsible for my problems. Now did you understand how you blame the world for it? We love to blame every other person. So then how come all that, you know, street food from outside never affected? And that one pizza from some fancy location affected? Oh, that is because, because of milk. Well, the thing is, you got to understand one thing. You may be staying in the most, you know, mosquito infested area and yet nothing will happen to you. No malaria, no typhoid, nothing. And yet, if you go to a very good place, you know, like Singapore, and you will end up having dengue. But dengue is a disease which is from the, you know, clean water. It's called a clean water mosquito. Have you ever thought of that? Why is it that when you are in a mosquito infested area where all the horrible mosquitoes of this world are, you know, literally after you pouncing on you, nothing happened to you and that one mosquito in a clean area affected you. Have you ever thought why it happens? <laughs> Nobody will be able to predict this. But this person, this person who believes that I am the greatest thing on planet Earth, whose mind has become so strong, believes that he knows everything. You see, my problems is because of that bank manager. My problems is because of that person who, who did not give me the money. My problems is because my husband is not good to me. And they start blaming the whole world. So there are people who will blame their parents. They will say, my parents never treated me properly. And that is the reason why today I am such a you know, people do not consider me as a good person. Why? Because my parents were very bad to me. Oh, is that so? Why is it that there are so many stories in this world where they, they don't have parents also and that person turned out to be somebody really, very really nice? Can that be answered? No. 
Nobody can say why there is a person in this world who has got parents turned out to be a bad person and one who doesn't have turned out to be really very nice. Circumstances are responsible for my problems. There was no power today. That is why I couldn't study. So I failed in my examination. So the rest of the days there was no power. There was. Then who is responsible? See, you love to, this person loves to blame every other thing in this planet earth and says, I am the greatest. I can do it. I can do. I can do anything. I can be the best, I can be the highest, the strongest. So they look at you know, Dwayne Johnson's muscles, specs and say, Oh, I can also lift, I can also eat you know, 26 whites of the eggs and become very strong. Yes, even if I can eat that protein powder, I can also become as strong as... But let me tell you this, it doesn't work. It doesn't happen. There are so many people who actually try to build muscles, try to become thin for a simple role. They end up having big problems in their life. So how is it that the other people, they could do it and you couldn't? So now did you understand, it is not in our hands at all. <laughs> First thing you got to forget. Nobody in this planet earth can predict that they are responsible for something and somebody else is responsible for their problems. No. No one in this planet earth is responsible. They are just happenstance. That is just a small blip on the path. So the question may arise that if that is the case, then why is it that I met my husband like this? You know, they show in the movies, you know, the person, the girl meets uh, a man in the way suddenly and then she falls in love and then they meet after 20 years and then they, oh, you are the same person, blah, 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 and get married and all that. Okay, all that nonsense happens. How is it that happened? So they will say, see, I told you, no, I know. Well, there is no I know in that also. And there is no I did it. Then you know, you cannot do anything. There is always, they say, you know, they say in, in our world, there is always a slip between the cup and the lip. Something that is coming up to here suddenly goes away. <laughs> and I think we all have examples in our life which we can cite. Oh, this happened like this, that happened like that way. Why? You have no answer. There is no answer. Because of this, you cannot say. Again, you will say, in your office, this person was acting very badly with me. That is the reason why I had to leave the company. Oh, is that so? No. <laughs> so this is a very, very important thing which you should remember. The person with this strong eye, the person who believes that they are the greatest, uh, this mind which made you think that you are the greatest, the strongest or whatever, this mind has created these illusions for you. See, when I say you, it doesn't mean you, you. It means the world, the whole world. I'm talking about the whole world over here. And there are no individual examples. You can cite your own. You have seen in your life when the ego becomes strong, you start praising yourself or blaming the whole world. You praise yourself, that means you have a bloated ego. And when you blame the whole world, remember you have a deflated ego. At the end of the day, when you blame the whole world and you have a deflated ego, do you know how difficult is that deflated ego? It is stronger than that I, me, myself ego, which says I am the greatest. And this ego doesn't allow you to think right. But remember one thing. Nobody, nobody on this planet Earth can control everything in this. What is happening? You may say that there are certain countries which are ruling over some other nations and that things will change. No, 
you cannot even predict that. <coughs> so, this individual says, this happiness and distress pertains not to the soul but to the interaction of material bodies. Now remember the soul which we are talking about is the spirit soul which has come from the supreme divine consciousness, the God. So these individualistic people, that is this self-centered person says, see it is because of this person or it is because of this object that I am suffering or I have done something better in my life. Got it? They do not attribute all their success or their failures or whatever to the Lord Almighty. They do not. And they say, what soul are you talking about? There is no soul or anything like that. We are human beings. We have a body. After I die, I die. It's simple. Where do I go? Oh, you will go to the dust. You will become dust. Is there a soul? No, there is no soul. So these people believe in that individualistic ego. They believe they are the greatest. They know everything. So I know they will say those words. So if someone bites his tongue with his own teeth, at whom can he become angry in his suffering? So some, he believes that he is responsible or the world is responsible. Two ways. If you say that the demigods who rule this bodily senses cause sufferings, Still, how can such sufferings apply to the spirit soul? This acting and being acted upon are merely interactions of the changeable senses and their presiding deities. When one limb of the body attacks another, with whom can the person in that body be angry? It's an important verse for us to understand how these senses and other parts of the body behave. If you say that the demigods who rule the bodily senses cause sufferings. Do you remember when I said these words to you that every sense has got a god within? It is controlled by a demigod. Now, demigod means something that controls our eye. Not necessarily a man with a crown on his head and a scepter in a hand and all that, okay? With a big moustache and all. Okay, no, no, no. There is no such person sitting inside your eye. Uh, which I used to think in the past, you know. The, the, when I was a kid, I used to look at the radio and think that there are small people inside. <laughs> well, as a kid, you can think of anything. So, yeah. But, so there isn't a small person sitting inside who is called the demigod. No. It is the organ and it is the controlling factor and that controlling factor inside your eye or your ear or your nose or your is called the demigod. Alright? So in the heart, something runs your heart. That is the demigod of the heart. The lungs have their own god. Why we say god? Because we do not understand how this works. So we say, no, God knows. Don't we say, God knows. <laughs> so, so we just call him God knows. How does your lungs work? When you pump air in it, okay, you're just talking about some physical action, but how do they work? Um, they have, there are alveoli in the, in the lungs, you know, they, they exchange the air. You still are not telling me how it works. <laughs> who is the one who makes it work? So please call that person demigod, whoever it is. <laughs> Whether it's an individual who is standing inside every alveoli and pumping air inside, you can just imagine it will look very funny to you. But think, this world, that is our world, this, is, this body is also called the universe. Okay? It's also called the world, it's called the universe. And every individual senses, organs, including your finger and all that, they all are having presiding deities. Presiding deity means somebody who controls the actions with this particular object. So even if I am raising my finger like this, somebody is raising that finger inside. Some factor is there inside. There, Of course, the great people in this world who are egoistic will say, No, you are raising the finger. Who is this you? You, you. 
<laughs> so that is the reason why this verse is giving us the definition. There is a presiding deity in our eye. So that is the one who controls this bodily functions. You can see because of the presiding deity. You can hear because of the presiding deity in your ear. You can smell because of the presiding deity in your nose. Alright. So if you say that the demigods who rule the bodily senses cause sufferings. I was telling you how the mind says because of my sense, because of this person, I am having problems. You know, you say, you know, my eyes cheated me. I didn't see that. So, oh, your eyes are cheating you. And not you. Eyes. They are showing you some wrong picture. Why is it that you are seeing the wrong stuff and not the other people? Think. Okay. Now, just one example. Now you are seeing a show. Okay. A fashion show. Alright. There are fashion shows going on in this world. Now you are gone for Miss Universe. And there are about 10 people sitting in a row. Now, you know how many models you know, they, they, from different countries are coming in and going out. You, know, you must have seen. Now these 10 people are watching the same thing. One person will say, wow, this girl is good. You know, they, they, will, they will root for her. Come on, come on. Okay, so why are the other nine people not rooting for her? Oh, she is from his country, Venezuela. And the rest of them, no, 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 she is not from my country. So she is not good looking. Oh, she is not good looking because she is not from your country. So is it your eyes problem or is it your mind's problem? Did you see that? The problem is because of your mind and not because of the eyes. All those 10 people are seeing the same thing. And they will blame their eyes for it. Actually, it is the mind who is responsible. The mind is telling you wrong stuff. Right? So, some people find beauty in something. Whereas, the other person will say, no, it's not good. Now, you go for a movie. Some four friends go for a movie. And you take their reaction. One person will say, oh, it was so boring. One person will say, oh, it was a very beautiful film. See, I liked it. One person will say, ah, it's okay. I just went to see the heroine. Somebody will say, no, I wanted to see Dwayne Johnson. Okay. Okay. So everybody has their own way of looking at the same object. So then can you say that the eyes are responsible or the ears are responsible? No. They are assisting you. Assisting. The eyes assist in vision. Isn't it? The ear assists in hearing. Who is the one who decides they want to hear or not hear properly? It is the mind. The mind says, you can hear these good words. This person is saying something nice about you. So you can hear that. And your mind decides what is right for you and what is wrong for you. So did you get the whole point? These great people, these I, me, myself people, they start blaming the senses for it. Whereas it's the other way around. The senses are not responsible. The mind is responsible. So you say that the demigods who rule the bodily senses cause suffering. Why would the senses cause suffering? You hear a few words. Somebody says something bad about you. And you immediately get upset. And you will say, I overheard these words, so I got upset. But the same words need not make you upset if your mind is under control. Did you understand that? As a kid, when I, now, in Mumbai, I was the darkest kid over there. So, everybody came and said, you know, Blacky, Negro, Kalia, all those names that are there. So, I used to feel very bad as a kid. You know, every now and then, somebody saying the same words, I used to feel very bad. Then, 
one day it so happened that I was now there was a small gathering of all relatives, and uh, you know as a kid you are always asked you know, told you know all these great people in front of you what do they say? They will tell you. Can you recite a poem? Or can you sing a song? We want to hear. Can you say that speech? And all the great people sitting in front of you, they want to hear. So, when my number came, I was very shy. I didn't want to go in front of all these people because they were all, all my uncles, aunts, all those relatives. So, somebody pushed me and said, you go ahead and say something. Now, at that given moment in time, I forgot all my poetries. I had learned so many poetries in school and nothing was coming to my mind. Now, you should know when nothing comes to your mind, all the film songs come to your mind. <laughs> so I started singing one song from a film. And it was like, Mere Desh Ki Dharti, Sona Ogle Ogle. So it was a very beautiful movie. Uh, from that movie, I sang this song and I sang very nicely. And someone in the audience saying, Ye Kalia bohut achcha gata hai. <laughs> this blackie is, you know, is singing very nicely. This one cousin of mine, she got so angry that she went and shouted at him, Don't call him Kalia. I just started looking at her. I said, What is she saying? I said, Don't call him Kalia. And then she sang one song, Hum Kale hai to kya wa dil wale hai. You know? It means, so what if I am black, but I am a, a Dilwala. Dilwala means somebody who is uh, very good at heart. Okay, something like that. So later on when she met me, I said, uh, you took my side, huh? you were very nice to me. She says, no, why should everybody say something bad to you? You are a very nice person and I like you. Okay, you can imagine, you know, eight or nine year old. And so I am immediately falling in love with my own cousin. <laughs> so it was a very funny scene over there. See, it was a very funny scene, but it taught me something that I need not be scared of anybody in this world, that I can sing. People appreciate what I sing and I don't need to think that the color of the skin has got something to do with the person. So, did you understand how what you hear can change your entire perspective? Okay. So, hearing. So, is it the hearing that matters or is it the mind that matters? It is the mind which tells you everything. It is the mind which tells you you are the best. It is the mind which tells you you are the worst creature on earth. It is the mind which literally rules over your entire being. It can create healthy situations, it can create bad situations and the mind of this egoist says the senses are responsible. So I hope you got this thing. This acting and being acted upon are merely interactions of the changeable senses and their presiding deities. So this egoistic person believes that the presiding deities in this senses are responsible for the problems. No. It is not. So, even if there is a dirty smell you know, which you don't like, maybe one or two people in a group may feel bad about it, but there are others who may not feel bad about it. I have never liked the smell of a cigarette. But those who smoke, for them it's not a problem, isn't it? Those who smoke cigarettes have no problem whatsoever. But those who don't and those who don't like the smell definitely get affected by it. So is it your nose problem or is it the problem with the mind? Same way, you will find that uh, there was one small film where uh, I don't recollect the name of that film where uh, it was I think it was Kapoor and Sons. Okay. In that film there is this heroine and this heroine sees these two brothers you know, 
she is in love with i mean she likes this other guy and the the younger brother she is actually in love with the younger brother and one day this younger brother sees this girl dancing with the elder brother all right and there is a big fight over there and then he starts believing that oh she doesn't love me anymore later on at the end of the film he realizes that his elder brother is gay and he doesn't like girls i mean he is not into girls and then he sees his elder brother going out with another guy then he believes oh this girl is in love with me not with that with my brother how deceptive was this so what you see with your eyes or what you hear can be deceptive to your mind all right so everything is supposed to be connected to the mind and not to the senses so never blame the senses okay so no presiding deity in these senses are responsible for any problems so krishna describes over here when one limb of the body attacks another so with my this hand if i am clap you know if i am beating this hand does it mean that this hand is responsible for the problems no is connected to the same body isn't it so did you get the point so if i slap myself like this so my hand slapped me can you say that it's your own hand if you want you are slapping yourself and there are people you know they they they'll say you know when they come for my lessons over here they always will say you know sometimes you know your spiritual lessons are so overwhelming i want to bang my head on the wall i say go ahead be my guest there is a wall over here you can bang your head over there <laughs> you are responsible for your problem not me <laughs> spiritual lessons are not so easy you know if they were easy i would have had million students at this point in time and everybody would have got a degree correct ha huh? but <laughs> there is no such thing spirituality is one of one of the toughest subjects of all so you can slap yourself with your own hand and who is slapping you you yourself so did you get the point it's the mind which is very very destructive as far as telling you what you are supposed to do and not supposed to do now the next verse says 52 if the soul himself were the cause of happiness and distress then we could not blame others since happiness and distress would simply be the nature of the soul according to this theory nothing except the soul actually exists and if we were to perceive something besides the soul that would be the illusion therefore since happiness and distress does not actually exist in this concept why become angry at oneself or other did you get the point i'll read the verse once again if the soul himself were the cause of happiness and distress then we could not blame others since happiness and distress would be simply the nature of the soul according to this theory nothing except the soul actually exists and if we were to perceive something besides the soul that would be illusion therefore since happiness and distress do not actually exist in this concept why become angry at oneself or others so krishna is not saying he is saying this words okay he says somebody has put up this theory so please do not construe that oh krishna told me about this theory you know all my problems are because of my soul <laughs> somebody has put up a theory say see now that i have understood my eyes are not responsible for my problems correct so then the soul is responsible soul is responsible yeah yeah my soul is telling me i should be happy my soul is telling me i should be sad common sense will tell you 
Why is the soul interested in your happiness or your sadness? But yet the person believes. They, by the way, the way they put it across is like this. My inner being feels happy. Have you heard these words? Huh? Those who do yoga and all that, they want, you know what they say? My inner being felt happy doing yoga. Your inner being felt happy doing yoga means what? So there is an inner being who feels happy and who feels sad. So it is not connected to your senses then. In the previous verse, the mind was telling the senses are responsible. Now in this, who is saying who is responsible? The soul is responsible. So he says, this, this verse says, the soul is the cause of the happiness and distress. So you cannot blame the other people. So one example will give you an idea about it. So we take the same example of watching a movie. So somebody goes for a movie and it's a it's a heart wrenching story. It's a very beautiful story where naturally you know you feel like crying. So everybody who's sitting near you, you know, especially <laughs> they're looking at the film and crying. I felt it in my heart, you know. Is that so? You felt it in your heart and you started crying because you were seeing a film? And there is another person who says, How, What stupid movie this is. I never felt anything. Why? You never felt anything? I saw Otane. This doesn't happen in this world. So there is one person who is crying away to glory and there is another person who is not even affected by it. So is it the soul which is responsible? So in this person, he felt inner happiness and somebody felt inner sadness. So the soul is responsible. So did you get the point? But there is another person who is not even affected. He says, stupid story. I don't like this kind of nonsense. I would rather go for all those war movies or when, when one, one uh, hero will smash into 100 people. Okay, yeah, the futuristic films and they take one gun and they shoot everybody down. By the way, all those hundred people are shooting at him and nothing happens. Have you ever noticed that? You see all the Darth Vader's and all the great artists in this world, you know, even if there is a hundred guns trained at them, nothing happens to them. And whereas one Darth Vader or one, one person will remove his sword and smash everybody up. Oh, why should I say Darth Vader? You should see Prabhas in that. Bahubali. The whole army he defeats. Uh, a few days ago I was telling these people story of Samson and Delilah. Yeah, have you seen Samson and Delilah? Samson is like the, you know our rock. Hmm. So Samson with one you know that skull of a donkey was able to destroy an entire army. I will give you a skull next time when you are going for a war. Let me see if there are some Samsons in, in our group. <laughs> so you say, you know, no, Samson is not responsible somebody. <laughs> so did you get the point? It is not the skull of that, you know, which was responsible. It's a story. Right? Today we were doing one verse called Kali Purusha. Kali Purusha means the, the person who represents the, this current yuga, current age, so he said, when the Kali Purusha was asked to go away, because he is very bad. It is not Kali Purusha who is bad, it is you who is bad. <laughs> got the point? It is the nature. So there is no such great person called Kali Purusha who has got some great fangs and you know teeth coming out like this. I mean, those who represent the different yugas, they represent it like that, isn't it? Have you seen the angels? No? Why do angels need wings? Ever thought about it? In outer space, how will they go? With the wings, there is no air over there. Do you get the point? So that means these angels must be only surviving in the at below the at our atmosphere, isn't it? The common sense will tell you why is the angel supposed to have wings? Nobody can explain. 
right? So angels are only living on earth maybe. They can't go to the moon. There is no air over there. So how will they fly? Correct? It is a depiction. It is a way in which we depict things. And people believe, oh, angels have wings. No. And why is it that the, uh, you know, the God always has a halo behind his head? Have you ever thought of that? God has a big halo. Oh, there must be some sun behind him or something. No, don't worry. There is no photographer who is shooting God in, you know, behind with a very light, big light over there. A thing like that. It only means he's intelligent. You got the point? He's very smart. He's smarter than you and me. <laughs> so that, that is a depiction. Just like angels have wings, doesn't mean that the angels are going to fly with the wings. Oh, tomorrow you'll see one bird in the sky. But that looked like an angel. Oh, there are lots of people who have sightings of angels. Have you heard that? Angel therapy, angel this, angel that. You go and search, uh, go go to Google and see. Everybody will say, oh, oh this angel, my arch angel is uh, so and so. Oh, your arch angel is so and so means oh, that angel is going to come flying down to you and say, my dear son, my daughter, this is going to happen. There is nothing like that going to happen. All right. It is only a way of putting it across. Guardian angel means what? Guardian angel is somebody who guards you. Right? Guardian angel means somebody who guards you. Who is the one who is guarding you? So we come back to the verse. The soul. The soul is not even interested in guarding you or not guarding you. Why is the soul God? And just think about it. If God Almighty is interested in you, I want to torture you till the end of this world. Just imagine that God Almighty saying these words. You know, he's singling me out. He wants to torture me. You see, all my troubles are because of God in heaven and all that. Why is God in heaven interested in you? Just like if there is an ant hill, are you interested in specific ant? I want to torture you. Do like that, is it? You know, there is an ant hill and you are the great almighty God for the ant. You are the big, mighty thing and you are going to pick up an ant and say, I am going to torture you. You are going to do that? No. So in the same way, think if God almighty is there, why does he want to torture you? He is not even interested. So this verse teaches some kind of a theory where people think that the soul inside is responsible for all my happiness and distress. So when someone says, no, I feel very nice in my soul, in my heart. Everybody else feels the same, more or less. Isn't it? If you see somebody is, you know, cutting off someone's head naturally, everybody is going to think like that. You go for the horror movies, if you see the whole theater filled with horror movie characters, you know, people who have come to see and if that great horror movie character, he comes and he puts a sword like this, everybody is going to win, isn't it? So everybody's soul wins, is it? It's a reaction, it's a common reaction and your body reacting to it. So don't bother your head about no soul in your body is going to react. So this verse says, since happiness and distress will simply be the nature of the soul, there is no nature of the soul. The soul has no nature, by the way. Okay. So this you should know. According to this theory, nothing except the soul actually exists. And if we were to perceive something besides the soul, that would be illusion. This is another thing which these people say, those who believe that soul is responsible for everything. I see God in everything. And if somebody does something to you, God is responsible for that. So, the same story which I said, you know, there is a mad elephant coming and there is a mahout sitting on top, the one who guides the elephant and this boy is going in front. Yeah, he is coming in front of that elephant <coughs> and you remember that story? I uh, will recap it for you again. I will tell you once again. So, there is a, there is a teacher, a master and he tells his Student, you see, God is in everything. God is in everything. So he goes out and when he is walking on the streets, there is a mad elephant coming in front of him and there is a mahout sitting on top. So this man says, God is coming near me. 
the elephant. Why? You know, we have elephant gods in India. Ganesha. So he says, oh, Ganesha is coming. I'm very happy Ganesha is coming. So everybody around him is saying, you know, get out of the way, get out of the way. It's a mad elephant. He says, no, no, that is Ganesha. Ganesha will not harm me. Gods do not harm their, you know, their children. And the Mahut on top is saying, get out of the way. He's shouting his head off. So the elephant comes near and gives this person a solid, you know, it throws him out. So he comes to his guru and asks him, he says, you told me that, you know, God is in everything. And yet I was praying to this Ganesha God, you know, that elephant which is coming near me. And yet he threw me away, you know, he, and I'm hurt. He says, so your God is responsible for your problems. See? So he says, yeah, Ganesha only did this to me, you know, he, he threw me and I felt hurt. He says, oh, so what happened to that God who was sitting on top of this? That Mahut, was he not telling you get out of the way? You should have listened to that God. Isn't it? You should have listened to all the gods who are telling you get out of the way. So who is this idiot who is telling you that you should be responsible? The God is responsible. Now did you get the point? It's your mind. It's the mind of this person which said something wrong. You cannot generalize a statement that the God is in everything. So one God is not going to harm you. Sir, there are gods which will harm you also. Why are you bothered? So in your life, there are good people and there are bad people and there are worse kind of people also. So yes. So did you get the point? So this verse says that I shall continue this verse tomorrow again because this verse needs a little more explanation. So I will stop over here. So just a small recap. We did one and a half verse, I think, or two verses. In that, the mind says, the mind of a deluded person says, the senses are responsible. Whereas, in reality, senses are not responsible. They are just doing their jobs. The nose smells, the ear hears, the eye see, they are only doing their jobs who is responsible for all your problems? The mind. And yet the mind tells you, your eyes are responsible, your ears are responsible. You should have heard properly, you see. Oh, you should have heard properly. Who has told you that? Your mind and somebody else. So the mind is the main culprit. And when you listen to your mind, the ego is the one who stands up. I am the greatest. I am the strongest. Everybody is troubling me. I am the worst creature on earth. So one is inflated ego. One is deflated ego. The I which tells you so. So we have done this and we have come to a stage where we are going to do another verse where there is a theory which goes around saying that no, your eyes are not responsible. All right. Your soul is responsible. So now the blame is on the soul. So this is a theory we are doing at the moment and we shall continue from here tomorrow. So I shall stop over here and I'll continue from there. We are going to blame the soul for all the problems in the world. <laughs> okay. Shall we take care? You have a very good day. I'll see you all tomorrow. Bye.